and we carry on. Thank you. Good morning, Lupe. Welcome back. Good morning, everybody. Okay. Good morning. So let's start Parsha Shmini, page 588, 589. And it begins by Hebe Yom HaShmini, and it was on the eighth day. Then the question everyone needs to ask is, what happened in the first seven days? Yeah, Eight days of what? So for that, let us turn back to page 584, and let us see, good morning, Margarito. Let us see page, uh, the Maftir, which is the last four psukim of the previous parasha. So God is speaking, Moshe said to Aaron and his sons, take that from 33 to the end, 585, the last verse, okay, you shall not leave. Up. You shall not leave the entrance of the tent of the meeting for seven days until the day when your days of inauguration are completed, for you shall be inaugurated for a seven-day period. Okay, continue. As he did on this day, so Hashem had commanded to be done to provide atonement for you. At the entrance of the tent of meeting shall you dwell day and night for a seven-day period, and you shall protect Hashem's charge so that you will not die, for so have I been commanded. Aaron and his sons carried out all the matters that Hashem commanded through Moses. So there was a seven-day preparation period that they had before, as, as part of the inauguration, of the Mishkan. So for seven days he's there, Aaron and his sons are there, and it's Moshe who is performing the actual avoda, the actual service, and then our parsha begins. Vayihi bayom hashmini. So lead off, lead off for us in Hebrew, please. Vayihi bayom hashmini kara Moshe l'Aaron levanav ulezikne Yisrael v'yomer l'Aaron kach lecha egel ben bakar lechatat v'ay leolat mimi v'akrev lifnei Hashem. Okay. Um, yeah, go on, the Elbene Yisrael. Okay, let's take a string of that in English now. It was on the eighth day. It was on the eighth day, Moses summoned Aaron and his er 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 sons and the elders of Israel. Er he said to Aaron, er Take yourself a young so at this point now, Aaron has been waiting outside. I think we're on Dove, right? At this point, Aaron has been waiting outside, so to speak. And now he is taking uh, literally the bull by the horns, maybe where the expression comes from, right? And he is now actually right, starting to do the avoda, right? Yes. And he said, Aaron, take for yourself... Take for yourself a young bull for a sin offering and a ram for an elevation offering unblemished, and offer them before Hashem. Now, in Hebrew, it's a little bit more jar jarring. Right? In English, oh, take yourself a young bull. Great. In Hebrew, what does it say? Kach <laughs> lecha <laughs> egel. Hi. What is the egel? <laughs> the calf. Yeah. What else do we have in egel? <laughs> The chet ha'egel, the sin of the golden calf. See, here Aaron is finally being called forward to do the avoda, and what's he being told to take? Kach lecha egel ben bakar lechatat. Take an egel as a sin offering. Rashi says, to let you know that through this calf that you're bringing, you will have full atonement for the previous calf that we had to deal with, for the Chet HaEgel. Nevertheless, we could imagine just how uh, intimidating, if not devastating, this must have been for Aaron. Right. That here is being called forward, and the very first thing that we have to discuss, that we have to bring to mind, is this Egel. You know, I know why people like decaf. Oh, Aaron. Oh. Oh. Okay. Let's continue in English, <laughs> please. Wait all please. Wait all the children of Israel speak as follows. Take a he goat for sin offering, and a calf and a sheep, in their first year 
um, and in their first year, unblemished for an elevation offering. And the bull and the ram, and, and the bull and the ram for a peace offering to slaughter before Hashem, and a meal offering mixed with oil for today Hashem appears to you. Okay, so this. An elevation offering is an, uh, an ola actually means like to, uh, it means that it's completely consumed. Other, others had, had, had parts that were eaten by the Kohanim or parts that were eaten by the Kohanim and by the people who brought it, but this an ola was a completely consumed, so it was completely an, an elevation offering. For today, Hashem appears to you. Okay, this Rashi brings from the Gemara in Shabbos. This was the first of many things. It was the first day of the month of Nisan. It was a Sunday. It was the first day of creation. It's the first day that Aaron and his sons are serving as the Kohanim. It's the first time the fire came down from the heavens. It's the first time that the Shekhinah, that Hashem's presence, tangibly felt divine presence, was going to be there in the Mishkan. For today Hashem appears to you. Okay? So then, They took what Moshe commanded to the tent of meeting, and they all approached and stood before Hashem. Moshe, Moshe said, this is the matter that Hashem has commanded that should be done. V'yera aleichem kavod Hashem. And the glory, the cover, the honor of Hashem will appear to you. Right? Keep in mind that we had the Mamad Har Sinai. We had the Sinai experience. And that was followed by the Egel. And now we've been building this Mishkan in order to bring Hashem's presence Again, we've mentioned a number of times, Ramban, that this Mishkan is meant to be a mobile Har Sinai experience, that God's presence will be felt. And we're at that point now. We're at that point. And then Pasuk Zion is very, very interesting. So I'll take for us Pasuk Zion in Hebrew. <laughs> Okay, and one more. Good. In English, please, seven and eight. Good morning, Jill. Moses seven said, and eight. Moses said to Aaron, Come here to the altar and perform the service of your sin offering, your elevation offering, and provide atonement for yourself and for the people. Then perform the service of the people's offering and provide atonement for them as Hashem has commanded. Okay, so you've been told, Krav el Hanizbeach, come close to the altar. Rashi brings, Krav el Hanizbeach, Shaya Aaron Bosh, the Arela Geshet. Aaron was embarrassed. He was afraid to draw close. Avala Moshe, Lama Ata Bosh, Lekach Nivcharta. Why have you, why are you embarrassed? For this you have been chosen. So what is happening over here? Aaron is embarrassed. We understand why Aaron is embarrassed. We're after the Chet Egal, and the very first thing he's told, to, he's told to bring is a calf, is this Egal. Right, so, so what he had done wrong is being forgiven, is being put aside. Nevertheless, he seems to have to confront it. In order to put it behind him, he has to confront it to a certain degree. Moshe says to him, Lekach nivcharta, for this you have been chosen. Right, what is the idea for this you have been chosen? What's Moshe saying to him? How do, how do we hear this? How do we understand this? Dove. That he has, he has this feeling like, no, not me. You know, he has a feeling like, no, it shouldn't be me. Okay, so on one level, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. And Moshe says, hey, God has chosen you for this. 
God has chosen you for this, therefore, step forward. Good. Can we try to tweak out a little bit more? Can we try to tweak out a little bit more? He probably could not even believe <coughs> that after what he did, after Chet Egel, he is chosen for such an honor and such a... Such a position. position. Good. Right? So therefore, Lekach Nivcharta, for this you have been chosen. So again, you've been chosen. Right? You know, I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy, you know, but you were elected. Come forward to receive. Right? Come forward, in this case, to offer. You were chosen. You were chosen. He could understand more than anybody else something that no one else could understand okay. because of what he went through. Okay, Linda, what were you about to say? I was going to say that maybe the accent should be on you because wasn't Moses supposed to be possibly be the okay. So okay, that we discussed earlier. Right, you've been chosen and, there, and therefore step forward. Down below here, I mean, it's right here, right? it's not mine. The Deco Machine Brian says, it's precisely because you possess the attribute of shame that you have been chosen. God despises the haughty. Right, so lekach, according to that, lekach nivcharta, not just for this you have been chosen, but lekach, almost because of this. Hi, good morning. How are you? Good morning. For this you have been chosen. For this reason. For this reason. For this reason, because of, because of who you are. This is why you have been chosen. And probably also, come, come join, come sit over here. Probably also, his, because Aaron was known as, as Ohev Shalom and Rodev Shalom, he's always loving peace and pursuing peace. So that would also be all this be tied into all these the factors. Ideal, ideal person. Yeah. Lekach nivcharta. For this you have been chosen. Good. Because of your humility. Because you're feeling so hesitant. Because you're bothered by it. Right? Why don't you introduce yourself? I don't know if everyone knows you. In the middle of the <coughs> For a second. Hi, I'm Heidi Reese. I recently moved here. Not so recently, but feels like recently from the East Coast. Good. Ooh, where well, from? Hi, Thank you. Where from? Which part of the East Coast? Uh, well, I started out in Brooklyn, oh. but I zigzagged a bit, so most, most recently in uh, Washington, D.C. area. But okay. yes. I'm Welcome. really a Brooklyn person. Welcome. 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 Good. Good. We're all from the East Coast. No, I'm a native. Scratch the service of California and you find an East Coast. Oh, okay. So therefore, the kach nivcharta. Let's come back, guys. For this you have been chosen because of this. Because of your humility. Because you are bothered by it. And it was interesting. I had a conversation with somebody yesterday about angels. So, um, or I, I guess it, it may be that, I don't know, it's a non-Jewish concept to a certain degree that, you know, if a person lives a very righteous life, then in the afterlife they become an angel, right? Actually, actually, Ramchal says clearly in Derech Hashem, there are different spiritual beings. There are those spiritual beings that we call Malachim that are spiritual beings that will never become part of a goof. We'll never join forces with a physical body. And there are those spiritual creations that are unique in that they are destined to join up with a partnership with a physical body for a period of time. And those are what we call neshamot. Those are what we call souls. And a neshama is greater than a malach. Because malach actually means messenger. So a malach basically is almost like a robot that it does the, 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 the bidding of Hashem. Now, of course, a malach in a certain way is greater than any human being because he does the will of Hashem. Whereas we debate, we think about it, we say tomorrow, we say some of it, but not all of it, we negotiate, right? We are, we are this big mix of all of this uh, nonsense. So clearly in that respect, the Malach is far greater. However, in fact, we are greater because we 
choose, we choose to align ourselves with Hashem. It is our decision as opposed to something which is either imposed upon us or something which is inherent to what we are. Therefore, Lekach Nivchart perhaps goes even a little bit further. You made a mistake. You made a mistake. You made a grievous mistake. But that is, that is who we are. That is what we are. That is almost our glory. Because we can't make a positive decision unless we could also make a negative decision. We can't do right unless we also have the potential to do wrong. And everyone does wrong. Everyone makes mistakes. There is no tzaddik on this planet who doesn't do some things that are wrong. Moshe made mistakes. Moshe did things that were wrong. So that is who we are. That is what we are. And it's very interesting. One of my, one of my once spoke about this. Amashani Yom Kippur, right? So we write, Ashamnu, Bagadnu, Gazalnu, Dibarnu Dofi, ay, 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 ay. Now, even though we're saying a lot of ay, ay, ay's, but we don't seem to be, you know, we're not like, we don't seem to be overcome, right? We seem to be singing it out. Ay, 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 I have sinned, I have rebelled, I have stolen, I have astrayed. Uh -huh. right. It's right? But in a way that is our glory. Our glory is that we make our decisions. We are the creators of ourselves. We are the owners. We take full ownership because we do things that are right. We do things that are wrong. But our, the things that we do are right are only meaningful because we have this full ability to do things that are wrong. And we do. And therefore, we are proudly standing before you, Hashem, on Yom Kippur. We're here in Shul on Yom Kippur. We're proudly standing before you and saying, yes, we've done things wrong. We've also done things that are right. And we recognize the responsibility that we have for what we have done. And that is our greatness. Our greatness is our ability. You have the entire world that is doing this. There's the Perak Shira. The entire world that is singing the praises of God, and the sun sings the praise of God, and everything, all the animals do what they're meant to do, and they sing the praise of God, and the crowning, the, at, the, at the apex of all that, is mankind who chooses, and we join into that symphony. We lend our voice, our voice to that choir, that we choose to do that. And therefore, lekach nivchart, right? Aaron, you are so so uh, reticent. You're so you, you're so hesitant to come step forward. That's what it's all about. <clears throat> That's what it's all about. Because you recognize, because you have that humility. But but that is at our core. That is what we are. That is who we are. Yes, though. Does he maybe have a pre-admission of something? <coughs> I'm not sure. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm not sure. Okay. I'm not sure. So Aaron comes forward, right? And I think that that is an attitude that we need to have, right? We need to recognize each of us in the roles that we have. We've been chosen for that role. And we need to step forward. And we're going to make some mistakes. We're going to have some missteps. But we need to step forward and do whatever it is that was given to us to do. Right? And the fact that we've made mistakes along the way, that is who we are. That's, that is the <coughs> definition of, of the human state. And we move forward. We move forward resolutely in order to do. And they do. And they do all of these offerings. And we do all of these offerings. And then, take a look over here. Go to page 590. 
So they've done all this. They've done all of this. They brought all of the offerings, all as Moses had commanded. Pasuk Chav Bet. Someone take that for us in Hebrew, please, and then we'll see it in English. Vayisa Aharon. Beautiful. 22, 23, 24. So take that for us in English, please. <coughs> Then he descended from having performed the sin offering, the elevation offering, and the peace offering. Moses and Aaron came to the tent of meeting, and they went out and they blessed the people, and the glory of Hashem appeared to the entire people. A fire went forth from before Hashem and consumed upon the altar the elevation offering and the fats. The people saw and sang glad song and fell upon their faces. Okay. So take a look. Well, Rashi, actually we have it here in English. Let's take that English... On page 591, the second column by 23, Vayavo, Vayavo Moshe, Aaron Moshe, and Aaron came. So I'll take that, that paragraph for us in English, please. Moses and Aaron came. Why did they enter the tent of meeting? <coughs> Jill, you got that? Why did they enter the tent of meeting? Rashi, quoting Sifra, offers two alternatives. Moses was teaching Aaron the procedure of burning the katore incense on the inner altar. Okay, and B. And when Aaron saw that the Shekinah had not rested upon the tabernacle despite the long, long inauguration service, he was distraught and blamed himself, saying, I know that God is angry with me because of the sin of the golden calf, and it is because of me that the Shekinah has not rested upon Israel. He turned to Moses and said, Moses, my brother, what have you done to me that you had me embark upon the divine service and be humiliated? Hmm. Immediately Moses entered the tent of meeting with him and they prayed for mercy and the Shekinah rested upon Israel. Good, that's the end of 23. And the, and the glory of Hashem appeared to the entire people. At that point, a fire went forth from before Hashem. The fire came down and consumed upon the altar the elevation offering, the fats. The people saw and sang glad song and they fell upon their, upon their faces. Okay, Rashi, again, take that paragraph down below, the 24, fire went forth from before Hashem. The fire came out like a pillar from heaven to earth. It went to the Holy of Holies, went out to the golden altar, and then to the outer altar, causing the incense and the sacrificial parts to go up in smoke. So Aaron did everything he was supposed to do, and... Didn't, work. Didn't, happen. Didn't, happen. Didn't happen. Didn't happen. Didn't happen. Or maybe there was just a delay in like the miscount on Sinai. Well, he went in then to Moshe and he said, Moshe, you set me up over here for this absolute failure, right? What have you done to me? Maybe embark upon this, be humiliated. Moshe entered, they prayed for mercy, for Rachamim, and the Shechina came down. How, how do we understand this? Why? Why was there this delay? What happened? What, what was a necessary, perhaps, I'm not sure myself, but what was the necessary ingredient over here? Perhaps what needed to change? They, the, they had to bless the, the bracha, the priestly br blessing that he hadn't yet given. Mm -hmm. Moses and Aaron came to the tent of meeting and they went out and they blessed the people and the glory of Hashem appeared to the entire people. Yeah, I, think mm -hmm. I think he's waiting for Without Aaron that, a real change of heart. That wasn't enough. Everything else wasn't enough until, until they had until they did they done that. So then, according to that, that it wasn't really Moshe and Aaron, right? It was just they need to do one more thing. They had forgotten. I know, forgotten. To, to they, do it together. They, they need, need to do it together. Okay. So that, that that's what that, that's what I hear a little bit of here. That they needed to do it together. What did you want to say, Stu? Well, you know, Aaron was was still upset. <clears throat> about <clears throat> how he'd be perceived. Okay? I mean, you set me up for this embarrassment. Why is he even thinking about that? What's changing here? Right. Okay. 
And maybe God was waiting for that to change a little bit mm -hmm. before he... Ended. Okay, okay, good, good. I, I, I hear, like, to a certain degree, we need in Moshe to be part of this. Mm -hmm. And perhaps that's going to go back... <coughs> We discussed this a number of times. We discussed this by Titzaveh, that Moshe's name was left out, because Titzaveh mm -hmm. was the Parsha where Aaron is being consecrated, and Aaron is being consecrated in place of Moshe. Mm -hmm. right? And here, this is the, almost the final step. Moshe did the service the first seven days, and now it's being handed over to Aaron. So Moshe <clears throat> needed to be fully vested in this. Moshe needed to be there with Aaron, pleading with Hashem, let the Shekhinah come down, let Aaron's offerings be accepted. Perhaps Moshe needed to wholeheartedly, fully, fully be involved here, that it be given over to Aaron. Perhaps Aaron needed that. Aaron needed that, to see that Moshe is fully here with him on this. And Hashem also, in, in, order, in order for the Shekhinah, by Har Sinai, the Pasuk says very famously, Vayichan Yisrael Neger Ahar. That doesn't say Vayachanu, which is the plural for they encamped. It says Vayichan, which right, we, in English we say, and he camped. But it's talking about the entire nation, but we say it in the singular. So famously there we say, Ki'ish echad v'lev echad. It was like one person with one heart. That was what was necessary for the Hashra Tashchina. There needed to be this absolute unity. And perhaps over here we're going to have a, a revisiting, and not just a revisiting, but a, an institutionalizing of this Hashra Tashchina, there needed to be this absolute Lev Echad, and therefore we needed to have Moshe, who, who gave up this position, and Aaron, who is the recipient of this position, they needed to be there, arm in arm, pleading with Hashem, yes, let this come about. I was just wondering if it could possibly be a, also a special emphasis on Moshe as the premier of the Nevi'ah, that you know, we say, we got the Torah, Biyad Moshe. So he, therefore we needed his... his his intermediacy is part of the package. Yeah, yeah, I hear that. That individual, Moshe. That is, Moshe had to play, part. yeah, Moshe had to play uh, a, a more active role in this, in the Shekhinah coming the down. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then it happens. But say H, the fire comes down and it consumes from the inner altar, from, from, from the Kodesh Kadashim out to the inner altar in the Kodesh, to the outer altar in the courtyard, and they see this fire. What, what, what is that reminiscent of? Sinai. Sinai, good, and going forward, what else what, what else do we have this? The smoke and fire, and, I mean the cloud and the fire and the waves. Yes, but going further in the time of the Nevi'im, when did we have this? Where Eliyahu Navi, Elijah the prophet, had the showdown with the prophets of Baal, they each built their altar, and the fire came down. Mm -hmm. And they said, Hashem Elokim, Hashem Elokim, Hashem is God, Hashem is God. Here it is, the fire comes down from heaven. God is here in our midst. After this Chet Egel, after the sin of the golden calf, God is here in our midst. But then, yes, do you want to say something? Yeah, two things. One, um, first, Moshe and Aaron do the service. Well, first, Moshe does the service for seven days. They're all watching. Everyone's watching how it's done. Uh, Aaron's watching. <clears throat> here, he, he's learning. Now Moshe is, is, is telling them, go ahead and do what you learn. Fine. They did the service, but until they bless the people together, the fire doesn't come. Okay. And, and then one more thing. I don't understand. The fire comes, understand to light the incense, understand to go to the altar, altar to the sacrifices, whiteness go to the Kaddish Kaddish. I guess let us know that that is the very source of where the Kedusha is, of where the holiness is. Right, the, the, Gemara says, the Gemara says that at a point, much later on, when we asked for the 
the, the inclination, the drive for idolatry to leave us because it's hurting us more than it's helping us in terms of our conquering it, it was a fire that left the Kodesh Kadoshim. That, that represents Hashem's presence. You know, it's symbolic, right? Will it then be symbolic? Yeah, yeah, that, that is where Hashem's presence is. Mm-hmm. Yes. So we're at this incredible, incredible high point. Mm-hmm. And then look what, Vayikhu, page 592. So I'm going to take that for us in Hebrew and then in English. More? Just one second. More, more. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good place to figure out the One more. One more. And by Yom Moshe Aaron, who are shared with the Hashem Lamar, the Krovai Akadesh, for Al Pnei Kol Ha'am Echalei, by Yedom Aaron. Ah, by Yedom Aaron. Okay. How you want that? Okay. Here we go. So we here at this point of absolute celebration, absolute eufor- euphoria. The fire came forth from Hashem. The people saw, fell on their faces, euphoria. And then what happens? The sons of Aaron. Someone else in English, read that for us, please. Nadav and Abihu each took their, his fire pan. They, they put fire in them and placed the incense upon it. And they brought before Hashem an alien fire he had not commanded them. A fire came forth before, from before Hashem and consumed them, and they died before Hashem. One more, Moses said to Aaron. Moshe said to Aaron, Of this did Hashem speak, I will be sanctified through those who are nearest me, thus I will be honored before the entire people. And Aaron was silent. Okay, so what happened over here? Wow. So this, every right. year, I... So I let's let's work on it. Exactly. It's really troubling. Especially yeah. Nadal, I mean, if, if, if I'm supposed to take Hashem as a role model for parenting, so far, it was not that they were told, do not do this. It was just that this was a blank slate. They didn't know that they couldn't take incense at a different time. Um... Especially since this was okay, a celebratory so inauguration. Okay, there so might be... I got it. Let's hear. And also the punishment <laughs> to, to the crime before... I mean, if... I hear the point. Exactly. Let's deal with it. The, the punishment is, you know, Aaron, their father did something which was even worse. The Kona, the Cheta Egel was, to my opinion, I don't know, it was it was huge, really huge. He he took up for him the whole nation to 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 a Chet, to sin big time. He was forgiven. This is certainly to be this, is, this, this, this is and then his son. This is this is certainly this is certainly certainly a a, a troubling issue. And these and how old are those two boys? Yeah. I'm sorry. How, how old? old are they? They're men. They're they're, they're not kids. And they're they're motivated yeah. sincerely to give honor to Hashem too. This is certainly Maybe. this is certainly Maybe. this is certainly, this is certainly, <laughs> this is certainly <laughs> a troubling issue. And the Gemara actually goes through a whole long list of things, of things that they did wrong, that they did wrong because it, this is so troubling. All right? And some say that they were drunk. Oh. They entered. Some say that they had an attitude, one of these old geezers, Moshe and Aaron are going to move along so we can assume the mantle. There's a whole long list. But the psukim say one thing. Vayakrivu lefnei Hashem eish zara asher lo tziva otam. That they brought a strange, a foreign, an alien fire that they, that he had not commanded them to do. They brought this in with Nei Hashem, right? Before Hashem. So we're at this state of spiritual ecstasy. 
The fire has come down. God is here amongst us. And according to what the Pusik is saying, this is very different than the Chet HaEgel, and this is a lot more dangerous than the Chet HaEgel. The Chet HaEgel was a misstep by Aaron, under a tremendous misstep. I'm not, I'm not minimizing it, right? Aaron didn't think he was doing a mitzvah. Aaron didn't think he was doing a mitzvah. Aaron was attempting to delay. It was clearly a tremendous misstep. What we have over here is something that is far more dangerous. What we have over here is this seems, right? The fire came down from the heavens. Let us be a part of this. Let us do what seems right to us. This is how we are going to express. Let us bring a fire. God bring a fire. We bring a fire. Let's bring a fire into the Holy of Holies. They didn't mean any death. One second. One second. You're right. That's exactly the point I'm making. Aaron knew that what he was doing was a, was a way to deal with a situation that was quickly spiraling out of control, and it was an attempt to, to plug the hole. It, one second. It was an attempt to plug the hole. Here, we, have, we are in danger of hijacking this whole religion into do what you think is right do what moves you do what you think is spiritual God's fire is down here I'm gonna bring my fire into the Holy of Holies this is dangerous okay one second this is so dangerous because Torah at its very essence what does Torah mean instructions teachings. In other words, Torah, our understanding is that we are here in a physical world and God is there in the spiritual realm and we have instructions. How is it that we are meant to connect to God? Right? Judaism often is slammed, oh, you're so involved in all this minutia, this, that, do this. Yes. Yes, we understand the bracha that we make is Asher Kiddishanu B'mitzvotav, which means you have sanctified us through the mitzvot. We understand we are physical beings and we seek to sanctify this physicality of who we are to bring us up into God's presence. How does a person do that? We have no clue. We have no clue. Write the book yourself, it's worthless. How do we know? We don't know what God is. How can we possibly understand what it is that will bring us up there? Torah. Instructions. Here's again Mount Sinai. Here it is again. Imagine at Mount Sinai we rewrite the book. At Mount Sinai when God is finally telling us His vision, His directions, giving us his pathway, we say, well, I think we should do it differently. Imagine doing that at Har Sinai. The moment when mankind hears from God what should be done, well, I beg to differ. I have a different approach. I think this will be more effective. And here we are at Mount Sinai again. The Shekhinah has come down. It's now the mobile Har Sinai. It's there with us. If at this point, if at this point, what's going to happen is, well, let's do it this way. Let's do it that way. For, forever etched in my mind is, is hearing, hearing a, a, an individual share how, how he didn't want to perform a, a same-sex marriage because he didn't think that he, as a rabbi, should do that. But it happened that his daughter, who's also a rabbi, was scheduled to, um, to perform this marriage. And 
she was unable to at the very last minute. So it fell upon him. And as he described it, it felt so right. It just, it felt so right. Now, do our hearts and should our hearts break for, for those people who are in a situation where they can't, they find themselves, that they can't find an intimate, loving relationship, which is what every human being craves. Do our hearts and should our hearts break for someone in such a situation that they can't find that love and intimacy in a way that the Torah allows? Yes, our hearts do and should break for people in such a predicament. And as I always say, do I know what I would do in a situation if I was told that the Torah only allows homosexual relationships and for me being married to my wife would be considered a sin? Do I know what I would do? No. I don't know what I would do because it's not my nisayon, it's not my challenge. So I'm certainly not going to judge others. But to therefore say, oh, it is good, it is holy, let us make a Jewish kiddushin marriage out of it because it feels so right, that is this. That is this, that is the danger. You know, at the very start of something, if there's a deviation of, a lo- of, 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 of the lines, it's almost imperceptible, but you keep on going and you're in different universes. At this point, at this point, we're not talking about a chet egel doing something that is wrong, that I know is wrong, and it's, it's a wrong attempt to try to plug a, 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 a breach in the dam before, before the whole place floods. Here, this is what's right. This is Judaism. This is religion. This is God's will. This is serving God. I'm going to go into the Holy of Holies and do what I think is right, what makes sense to me, what speaks to me, what seems to be spiritually uplifting to me. I'm going to go into the Holy of Holies and do that. No. That, that we cannot have. This is our Sinai again, and we can't write the instructions. Linda. Well, I'm also wondering, we don't know the thinking of the two sons. Maybe they were looking at Moses and Aaron and saying they're getting all the kudos from this. Let's do something so we can have it too. Okay, okay. Yes, again, there are many things that are listed. But I'm saying just from what the words say, right? we see over here, this is not what this temple is meant to be. This temple, this, this mishkan, is not meant to be a place for my own innovative self-expression of spirituality. But he, God gave us free will. He gave us free will, and there are responsibilities that go along with that. You're right, we have our free will to work within the framework that he has given us as our service, right? We also have free will to say, I'm going to drop that and not do that. We have free will, and along with free will comes the responsibility for our actions. This was dangerous. The whole idea of Torah, we discuss this a number of times, we discuss it when it comes to kashrut, I think we discussed it a couple of weeks ago about the the simanim for an animal, right? For the kosher. So it's chewing its cud, which is a regurgitation of the past, and it is the split hooves, which is moving forward. You have societies that are all in the past, right? The camels, the Middle East. You have societies that are all in the future, the pigs, right? Oh, the pig eating society, the Western world where it's progress, 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 and we are have an understanding from the past as we move, an appreciation that we're building on the ashes we had 
last week or two weeks ago, the ashes is the first avoda that we do. We're building on those ashes as we move forward. If over here we have another review saying, Moshe and Aaron, old school. This is what we think should be done. Cannot be. I get your point, but why would God be afraid? It's not a matter of afraid. It's a matter of setting the course for the nation. He can, no matter what a human does, he can adjust the course. He can, he can leverage that. He can do whatever he needs yes, to do. Yes, good stuff. Why does he ex make them expire? And to, to this point... It's pretty severe. It's Where, dead, where's it, our chance to repent? Um, That's a very good point. Sir. Yeah, yeah. The, the, God can do whatever he wants, but, he'll, but he, puts, he puts the steering wheel into our hands, and we need to bear the responsibility of our decisions. Okay. Yes? And along with what Stu says, since it was not commanded, it seems like there were no Torah, no instructions either way. No, in that's not case. true. No, that's, that's, not that's incorrect. That we, it's, it's very clear what we should do, and what we should is what we should do. Beyond that is not what we should do. Right? You don't come into into my house and start doing things in my house unless that's what you're supposed to be doing in my house. Anything besides what you're supposed to be doing in my house, you're not supposed to be doing. Right? You were never told not to come into my house and build a fire in the living room. You were never told that. Nevertheless, for you to come into my house and build a fire in the living room is a little over the top. Is well over the top like, because that's my house. So if, right? if, if Brady does that, I get to smote him? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, but, Figuratively. You might come in and say, Janet, what are you doing? And I, you know, you would at first ask, and then you'd, later you'd think, well, that was strange. Okay, so we're dealing here with the code, with the Holy of Holies. This is not a place for self-expression. It's not a place for what seems right to me. No, I, I get that. But as we say, Hashem is a role model for parenting, and we're to learn, learn from those behaviors. Well, a, a parent... There are times that a parent needs to send a kid out of the house. Right? This is... Look, keep in mind... Keep in mind... This is a timeout. Now, again, we view it as... But they're dead! But they're dead, right? And Hashem views it as they they went from room A to room B. Right? From our perspective, they are obliterated. But no, there's, there's this a, is a timeout. What is a timeout? You move the person from room A to room B. Now, granted, right? That's it for them. Though I, I'm I'm quite sure another Navi. I forgot who they say it came back as. I mean, there there was uh, other other. Um, reincarnations, Gilgula, which we believe happens at times, in order for them to correct yeah. what needed to be yeah. corrected. Well, yes, no. Let's still well, let, 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 have a chance. So, Aaron's four sons were there watching Moshe do the thing for, four, for seven days. Okay. Hashem knows that these two sons are not going to do the service. So why are they really there? They're sitting there on Shiva. Okay, I'm not sure that that one goes. They are sitting yeah. in their own shiva. You don't sit shiva before it happens. I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes, yes. Sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so in Sinai and Aaron and Cheta and El, I go back to this, he knew that he was doing wrong, and still he knew that it's going to spiral down and it's going to be a biggie, and still, he did it. With these two boys, they didn't think that they do something wrong. They were so what there con trying to contribute their own spiritual, their own, you know, itchazkut and aliyah, you know, towards the heaven. And, and, Are you sure? And, uh, are you sure that was their motive? We don't I, really know that. But what I'm, well, what, what I'm saying, I, Yaki, is here, it's, you yeah. know, if someone is doing something that they know is wrong, we can work with them. When they're doing something that's right, it's really wrong. But they're convinced that it is right. It is a mitzvah 
this is what we should be doing, that is far more dangerous than someone who's doing something that they know is wrong. When we turn it into, right, look, in the world today, right, why can't we stop this whole scourge of all of these suicide bombers? Because they're convinced that what they are doing is holy, is great, is God's will. It's the greatest manifestation of God's will. If someone is doing something that they know is wrong, then we can work with them. You know it's wrong. Let's, let's control ourselves. When it's right, it's holy, it's a shaheed, it's great. That is the greatest danger. That's what I'm saying. This is far more dangerous than a chet egel, which was Aaron under pressure, yeah. buckling under pressure. This is the new way, the new world, the new path. This is what's right. You guys know. Everyone do your thing. That's what God wants. Mm -hmm. This is far more dangerous. I, I, I therefore say, I hope you say, it's, to me, I think it's uh, the, the God that's supposed to be Hanun Verachom and Soleach and everything, just took these two young boys as a Lemani Ruvein Rao and you know, this and is so, again, and sacrifice them and so with that I, I, I view it as, as Azel, if what I'm doing is going to, if what I'm know? doing is going to be misleading, this is, the entire nation is here, gathered, this is God's presence. If what I'm doing is going to be misleading, but not just misleading in a bad way. Oh, misleading them that this is the mitzvah. Again, 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 the same point, Yafi. Misleading them that this is the right thing to do. Misleading them that this is a mitzvah. Not buckling under pressure and misleading. Mis buckling under... This is your God. Buckling under... This this what, is your in, this is your intermediary. What, what this is your intermediary. This is your intermediary. If this is your God, then when Moshe came down, why do they leave that God? If this is the God, no. This is your Moshe. This is your intermediary. This the way I hear this. This is a point of completely misleading the entire nation, as opposed to what Torah actually is. Okay. Torah is following the will of Hashem. Not making, not making God's will, not, not, not defining God's will is what makes sense to me, but working on my will to be in conformance with what Hashem has given to us. I, 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 I want to do another point. There was, it's consistent that we have then taken this principle um, and applied it elsewhere. For example, if you have meat on the table, even if you have margarine, if you have people who might not understand, you're supposed to not do it, in, at least by some minchagim, correct? So, so we have a concept of maris, I'm not doing things in front right. of others, that's so, correct. So it comes I hear. forward and generalizes mm -hmm. then. I hear. Okay. Okay. At this point, so do one, one last point over here. At this point, Aaron is what is called an onane. An Onain is a person that one of the close relatives for which we mourn, right? There are seven relatives, co uh, connections which we mourn. Two going up a generation, mother, father, two going down a generation, son, daughter, and three on the parallel generation, brother, sister, spouse. Those are the seven relationships for which we are in Avel, we mourn. The period of mourning goes in after the burial. Until the time of burial, a person is in the status called an onane. Onane is from the death until the burial. A kohen is not supposed to perform avoda, any of the service, while they are in the state of onane. But Aaron was told not to, not to leave the ol moed. Right? Aaron in this situation needed to needed to carry on. 
Aaron did carry on for what was expo expressly told to carry on. There was one korban that he did not carry on. Then Moshe took him to task about that. So we turn to page 596, 597. Just one last point over here. Verse 19. By the bear Aaron al Moshe, Aaron said to Moshe, Without the, the, the Gemara goes through, without going into all the details of what the halachi Aaron had said, granted I was told to serve as an onain, but that was only for the specific sacrifices that were unique and special for this day. But for the regular daily sacrifices that were initiated this day but would carry on not as inaugurational sacrifices, but those that are constant, there I felt I should not continue to serve as an onain, and that's why it was burnt. Would Hashem approve? Vayishma Moshe Vayitav Be'inav. Moshe heard and it was good in his eyes. Rashi says, Hoda, he admitted that it was right. Velo bosh lomar lo shamati. He was not embarrassed into saying that, ah, oh, I didn't hear that. Rather, as the Gemara says this more fully, Moshe was willing to admit, you are right. That is what I heard. But I forgot. I forgot. So what we see here is to a certain degree, we see Aaron starting off the parsha so embarrassed over his sin and being told you've got to step forward and do what you need to do. And here we have Moshe also being willing to step forward and admit that what you're saying is right, and I was wrong. Now Moshe, it would have been a lot easier for him to say, oh, I, didn't, I never heard that teaching, but what you're saying makes sense. Moshe didn't do that. What did Moshe say? You're right. That's what I had heard. I forgot it. I forgot it, but you're right. Now that you say, I remember that's, that actually is what Hashem said. Now this is dangerous. Mm -hmm. This is dangerous. I can very well hear a person, Moshe in this situation, justifying being somewhat dishonest. Moshe, I can understand, justifying that it's not God's will for me to say, I forgot. You're right, you're right. That's what I heard from God, but I forgot that teaching. Why is it not good for Moshe to say, I forgot? There must be other things he forgot. Oh, Moshe, he forgot that. Maybe he forgot something else. Right? You are the one who's giving the Torah over to us. You forgot that? What else did you forget? Or, and, what else are, did you tell us that God said that maybe God didn't say? Once you, Moshe, are admitting that you forgot, doesn't that challenge the veracity of the entire transmission of the Torah? Sure. What else did you forget? Or what did, or what did you conjure? Or what did you remember that wasn't actually said? Right? There, there, there are many studies about how, how memory is not what we think it is. We think memory is a, sta is a snapshot. It's a video that was taken and then gets filed away and then we, we recall that video. That's not it. Memory is constantly changing based on other things that are happening and that's why you have many cases of, of, uh, 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 of these recalled memories of abuse that actually, that actually are, are not. Memory is constant. So Moshe, your memory, where are you at with your memory? Moshe said, yes, Moshe was not going to adjust the Torah to what was now convenient, even for the sake of the Torah. This in many ways, I think, links to the Nadav and Avihu. 
we have our Torah, we have our instructions, and that is kihin chayenu. That is our path, that is our life. And even for the sake of the Torah, we don't go and start to tinker and adjust. And the Torah says, Midavar Sheker Tirchak, from falsehood you have to distance yourself. Moshe needed to say to Aaron, you are right. Not what I was telling you to do was correct, what you did was correct. And not only that, that's what I heard from Hashem and I forgot. It's not for us to create new laws, new pathways, and coming back to Nadav and Avihu, the way I hear it, I understand there are some who don't uh, align with not, me. No, you really Fair don't. enough, fair enough. But what's more dangerous <laughs> than, than uh, there's actually, actually an expression for this, right? But when I'm doing something wrong, and I'm doing it l'shem shamayim, when it's a mitzvah, and I think the suicide bombers is, is an excellent example of that. When what I'm doing is good and holy and right and God's will and I'm a martyr, right, that is where it gets so, so dangerous. And at this point, there needed to be the epitome of a timeout that they be moved from room A to room B. Okay, we'll call it, I'll take it up to the server, okay? We'll call it over here, everybody. I was going to say, the Yasser Hara wants to convince a person this is a mitzvah. Yeah. If, if I'm convinced it's a mitzvah, then it's that much more uh, powerful. Because, hey, I'm doing the right thing. Right? You're the one who's wrong. Yeah, the Yasser Hara is good at this. No, was he an Abhi who's an Abhi? You know, he was Aaron's grandson, but he wasn't yet. That's my love. Ben Elazar. Okay, so he was one of the sons of one of the remaining. Thank you, Dove.